So, I have had a significant setback. <laughs> um, as you can see, I have a massive swelling here. Very firm, very large, uh, very painful. <laughs> um, what is remarkable about it excuse me, is that on September 25th, my ENT oncologist examined me and there were no lumps. I I did complain of some discomfort. Um, by the way, this is mirror image, right? This is actually the left side of my face. <laughs> this is happening on um, where my surgical scar is. Um, where I was dissected. Um, so September 25th, I had no trace of a lump. Uh, I had some discomfort. I mentioned this to Dr. Anderson. He talks about doing a PET scan. Um, and, um, we left it at that. Um, there was no indication of recurrent cancer, although, of course, I see him several times. Um, um. Uh, and um, uh, you know, following up my surgery, which took place last December. Um, so, uh, a couple of days after that, that was a Saturday, on, I think, September 28th, uh, Tuesday, I think. Um, I began to notice a small lump, which I couldn't even photograph at the time. I photos one point. <laughs> I didn't want to try to see if it showed up on the camera. Maybe the size of a grape. Swollen lymph node. Don't know. Um, it's now October 9th. So in 11 days, that has grown into this. And my doctor is somewhat irritated that I've gone to the ER several times, but in honesty, I was hoping maybe it was a uh, swollen salivary gland from the fluid ducts. Um, because I've had that before, and there was swelling early on the size of this. It was like on Thursday, the 30th, my wife mentioned this sound of any land problem. But, um, so, you know, I've had that before, but <laughs> what I didn't realize is in my December surgeries, I, I, my sound of any land was removed from this side. I don't have a sound of any land over here. Um, so, it's not a sound of any land. Um, a lot of people mentioned massive accumulations of lymph and uh oh hello um that seemed possible uh, i thought maybe i had lymphedema my doctor tells me excuse me that uh, lymphedema only happens in patients who had radiation therapy which i have not had i've only had surgical therapy I had grafts taken from my wrist I barely see them now. Looking really good. Um, and my tongue was rebuilt after a glossectomy from those grafts. Um, anyhow, um, was operated under the thought that this was maybe a mass accumulation of lymph, but my doctor does not think so. Um, in going to the ER, I mean, I was freaked out. I needed pain meds. It was the weekend, approaching the weekend. I wasn't going to be able to book an appointment with my GP. 
uh, I had booked an appointment with Dr. Anderson, but it was eight days away. So Friday, I went to the ER. They did an ultrasound, which was inconclusive, um, and gave me a prescription for codeine. Um, I'm going to try a sip of Pepsi, my first Pepsi of the day. I've been avoiding a caffeine withdrawal headache because my codeine has caffeine in it. But... Uh, uh, I should mention I've had two codeine. Okay. Um, so the pain you see me being in is under two codeine. Um, may have to move to something stronger, but I'm trying to space it out. Um, I also need a sense to eat something. Um, I've had no solid food today. I've had a smoothie. I've had some boosts. I've had water. Um, I did try this poutine, but I did chicken poutine yesterday um, at a restaurant. I could only eat about half of it. Um, let's see here. Let's see the calendar. Um, Uh, it was Friday the 30th, I went to the ER. They uh, said it was inconclusive, told me to come back for a CT scan on Monday, which I did. Um, and it was more descriptive, but they didn't have a conclusion about what was going on. Um, uh, Dr. Anderson and his office told me various things that I should not use hot compresses cold compresses, should not do gentle massage of the area. All of these are things that are recommended for swollen lymph nodes or swollen salivary glands, but not a good idea here for cancer patients. Uh, so, you no. Know, um, on the 6th, I believe it was Thursday. Bob Hanlon, my friend Bob and I, went to see when well, the VIF has been ongoing. I've done a shit ton of VIF blogging on Alienated in Vancouver on my website. Even despite all this, uh, in between articles about, uh oh, I may be sick again. I've, I've written about 20 films, a couple of interviews, reviews. Really enjoyed the VIF. The best film was. The Humanity Corporis Fabrica, which is a surgical documentary. I loved it. Um, so Bob and I got together to see that at the cinema sec on the 6th, and we ended up going for dinner at an Italian place, and even though I was under two codeine, I could barely eat half of the sort of leaning. So eating is painful. As you hear, my voice is affected. My voice has been affected since my December glossectomy and graft replacement, but um, um, it's gotten worse. Um, I also feel weak, disease, achy. Um, so, I could barely eat that night. Even sipping water was getting painful. And through all this, I've consulted with 811. <laughs> My specialist hates me. <laughs> I think even though he doesn't, but I think it's been very frustrating for him that I'm taking anyone's advice other than his. But I'm not in touch with him on a regular basis, and, you know, uh oh, I can't eat. <laughs> That's scary. So, two things happened. Um, the night of the sex, I came home from the VIF. Said goodbye to Bob, came home from the VIF, and told my wife, so I have a fever. Because the 811 nurses had asked many times, Do you have a fever? Now, it turns out a lot of less trained nurses and doctors and general public members 
um, immediately assume if you have a fever, you have an infection. And in these, I did have some other signs of infection. I had shivers and chills. And I had a red patch in the area. So the 811 operators sort of were on the page that it was an infection. Um, but it turns out that some forms of cancer, like lymphoma, and non Hodgkin's lymphoma, can also lead to massive inflammation um, without infection. I'm not quite sure the process of how that works, but you know, half of this is Google. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, let's, let's have some drama before this gets too cold. I don't want it too hot, but let's try to see if I can use it. Mm. Mm. Again, with my picture has been normal since December, I can't use my tongue very effectively, so we'll fool around. Mm. Um... <clears throat> Incidentally, besides my throat being swollen from basically the base of my ears and my larynx, this whole area, my tongue, the graft, is also swollen. Yeah. Not as bad as it was. Moving in and out like that, I could feel pain all the way back into the root. <clears throat> <laughs> it is to me to get some salt with food in, but boost and, and sugar and whatnot. There. <laughs> They're not that great tasting. They're okay. I had something even worse called premier protein. The premium protein or something like that. My God. Everything tasted off after eating that. <sighs> or else something was affected by taste buds, but. Um, uh, you know, went to the ER and two things happened. I was there from 1 a.m. till 6 a.m. 6 a.m. They hooked me up. They, they didn't... <clears throat> the ER doctor wasn't that swift. I was trying to explain to him that this might not be infection, that I'm a cancer patient, that... <clears throat> You know, it was painful and swollen, but I had been on from my previous trip. They gave me a course, I forgot to mention this. They gave me a course of Caflex. Caflex, whatever. Uh, 500 milligrams uh, 
four times a day, 2,000 milligrams of a powerful antibiotic. And the GP looked at the script and went, wow, that's a hefty dose. If she concluded, no, if, if that doesn't help, you don't have an injection. So I was thinking, I was personally thinking lymphedema, which is probably partially wishful thinking because lymphedema at least isn't cancer. Um, and lymphedema, as far as I can see, you know, the article that was reading on Google is something that can happen to you after you've had surgery. That lymph nodes moved. So, didn't seem that unreasonable. I think I might have a fever again. No, I'm not going to test myself. It'll be a false positive. It won't. I feel warm, but I've had two T3s in the last five hours, so just going to mask the true results. So, my next, um, I think my next pill will be at nine. Uh, it was like four hours from the last one I had, so. Um. Uh, I did have a fever most of the night. It was at 38.1 at the highest. And now Thursday, Thursday night, I had a fever of 37.9. I had redness and swelling, obviously. So. They hooked me up to an IV antibiotic, and they also gave me a dose of dextromethasone. I am NSAID intolerant. As far as I know, I've only had two bad experiences, but they involved massive swelling. And I have enough of that <laughs> right now. So, um, excuse me. It's okay, I'm glad. <laughs> this I'm gonna be able to get to, but um, so briefly, I don't, I don't know what dextromethasone is. I know it's a corticosteroid, but uh, no one told me anything. I was going to tell you the ER doctor. There was a moment where I, I very early on lost patience with him that probably sabotaged our effective communication because I was showing him my lump um, in a selfie, like this is what it looked like two days ago kind of thing. I've been documenting this quite well. As he went, wait, it's on the other side. And I said, yeah, it's a selfie. And he didn't understand. It's a mirror image. Have you never taken a selfie? <laughs> no. Um, maybe it was the start of a shift or the end of a shift or something. Not the sharpest tack in the drawer there. <laughs> maybe I should have tried to talk to him a bit more about his uh, medical advice. Excuse me. <laughs> um, but... I don't know what this extra method on my So I assumed that I felt so much better in part because of the um, antibiotics, the IV antibiotics. So they scheduled me for another round and another round. Um, uh, I can breathe, okay. Airway is not obstructed. Yeah. Uh. Uh. Um. Uh. 
So, I felt great Friday. I felt amazing. I felt full of energy. I was zipping around. Erica said it was like I was high. It was like I was on a stimulant drug. And there were some side effects. I was um, sweating a lot. I was a bit lightheaded and woozy. It was like almost that high energy you get when you have a serious fever. But my fever was gone. My inflammation went down. I could eat normally. There was a bit of discomfort, but much less than before and after. Well, I thought maybe, okay, there was something. It's, and so the antibiotics are working. It was infection. This is the day before my appointment with my specialist. Um, uh, I went back the next morning. They did not repeat the dextromethasone. But they repeated the, um, obvious antibiotics, and, um, they had no effect. The extra methods don't wore out. I had a great day. Friday, I was full of energy and vigor and got to see some great thrift films and do some writing and walked around a bit. I think I even went for a poke in some thrift stores and brought some books. Uh, back here. Um, <laughs> so, like, I was a new man, very briefly, but it was all due to the dextromethasone, which reduced my inflammation. But apparently dextromethasone is bad for A, your adrenal system, and B, cancer! You're not supposed to take it if you have cancer. I don't blame my specialist for being irritated with me on this, but I mean, he hates having less competent cooks sticking their spoons in his stew. Um, they don't know. They just don't know. This guy didn't know. So anyhow, the next day was not bad. I went to see Dr. Anderson. I got a bit of a talking to. I'm told that they would book a PET scan and a needle biopsy and basically just manage the pain, don't go to the ER. And um, um, wait till I hear from them and try to eat. Speaking of which. Mm. 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 For the record, chewing and coughing don't hurt, moving the tongue hurts, and swallowing me hurts. <coughs> 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 I think that's about all of the solid food I'm going to have today. <coughs> I'll finish my Pepsi and have a boost or a snack later. <coughs> Aspirating a bit of food, I think.
tough. Man, this is tough. So, man, this is a pain. Blah, blah, blah. But, I still had an appointment <coughs> to get through. This morning, today has been today. This Sunday, I had my third ID appointment. <coughs> this morning, I went in and explained <coughs> the situation to the doctor. Okay, let's discontinue the uh, treatment. He's the one who told me the extra methadone is bad for cancer. <clears throat> doesn't spe specify how, but okay. Um, so I, I, I did not ask for um, I asked for extra methadone or anything. Um, I did ask if, um, they could hydrate me, which one way is difficult, and I figured it would give me a leg up on the days where I have a bag of lactate and rigor in me, standard IV bag of fluid, saline, or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so they did that, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. written here, and all the way inside, pressing up inside the throat. Um, so, I got my bag of hydration. I also got a refill of um, codeine because I've been given something more powerful, but I don't want to move into narcotics quite yet. T3, so I guess codeine is still technically in our climate, but um, we wanted to try to keep things down. 811, by the way, has been very helpful through all this. I've had to guide the conversation with them and say, nope, it's not that, nope, it's not infection, nope, <laughs> my specialist says. But, you know, they're full of interesting information, like these containers say, that there are 30 milligrams of whatever in the pills, and they say I have no more than 4,000 <clears throat> um, milligrams of acetaminophen in the 24 hour period. But here's the problem with that you can put 30 a whole lot of times into 4,000, you can probably have 100 and some odd <laughs> pills. <laughs> And not reach. <clears throat> well, I could have some odd pills and not reach um, four thousand. Uh, so, um, it when one was very helpful in that she spelled out yes, Tylenol. Regular Tylenol and T3s have about 362 milligrams of acetaminophen. So we say that anywhere on this label. It's Tylenol extra strength, which I've been told to trade off with if the pain is managed. Um, it's not. But, um, um, it has 500 milligrams. I think it does say that. The extra slits on the label, but not in here. They only specify how much coding there is. Kind of dumb, <laughs> unpleasant, so un unhelpful. <coughs> um, okay, anyhow, I'm, I have to pee like a racehorse here, so I'm going to wind this up. But I had hydration. It brought down my fever. I took a nap when I got home. I feel better today than I did yesterday when I had a fever and was really quite miserable. I still don't feel good. Um, 
We have no idea how long it's going to take to hear back about the little biopsy or the PET scan. The PET scan was already supposedly set in motion September 25th, but I get the feeling that I'm a bit overwhelmed. Everyone in the medical system is a bit overwhelmed these days, so I don't even know if it was set in motion back then, but they said they'll sort it out as fast as um, so, I don't know, here we go round the cancer go round again. Um, I'm assuming there will be more surgery. I'm assuming this time there will be chemo and radiation, which I was hoping to avoid. Um, the entire reason they did it, like, the lasectomy wasn't my doctor's first pick. My specialist's first pick was radiation. <laughs> But another specialist in radiation went on about how, ah, oh, you're a young man, it'll be too debilitating, you don't want to do that, just have surgery instead. I don't think anyone really acknowledges that I'm an ESL teacher. Which, um, <laughs> being able to pronounce English sounds effectively is sort of important to the job. So, instead of having had radiation back then, which might have knocked all this out, might have prevented this recurrence. Now I have a glossectomy and I'm going to have radiation. And so my life is not going to be the same. The irony of it is, I was planning on returning to work on September 25th. My employers have been wonderful and supportive, um, saying that, you know, so what, you require the accent, um, come back. They value my abilities and like me, and they were, I was going to be starting up October 25th. I was going to return to work on a graduated schedule, but this is, uh, really calling that into question. <laughs> um, I don't know what to do. Like, I was thinking of writing a memoir about all this, but it's all moving too fast. So fast. This is within two weeks. Very frightening. But, I'm working on another film piece. I'm emailing questions to um, the director of Loving Highsmith about Patricia Highsmith. She has snails. Yeah, she put snails in her bio. There's photos of Pat with snails. Yeah. It's beautiful. You got to see Pat's snails. Uh, the inclusion of snails in the Pat Highsmith adaptation has become my baseline. <laughs> Assuming the snails are in the original, they better be in the adaptation for film. Um, deep water wasn't great, great, but it kept the snails. So I love Pat and her father's for snails. I would I, I used to talk to my co-workers about how weird Highsmith was, about how she would uh, smuggle, she obviously apparently went smuggled her pet snails hidden in her bra into Paris or France or whatever. Um, through the border, contraband snails on her boobs. I love a weirdo like that. A devoted, obsessive, very talented weirdo, of course. Yes, we got her too. This was a female protocol. But she was 74. <laughs> I think I'm going to be doing pretty well if I live that long. Alright. Over and out, folks. <laughs>